So if I was starting over, here is exactly how I would learn data structures and algorithms really fast. Before we get into the exact roadmap I would take, as well as exactly how I would make sure I learn data structures and algorithms in a way that actually allows me to pass coding interviews, we first need to understand why data structures and algorithms is actually a lot more important than you think. And no, it's not just about the coding interview. The importance of these topics, in my opinion, goes a lot deeper than that. And I learned this myself when I was first learning these topics. And I don't want you to make the same mistakes as I did, which was to neglect it for such a long time. And it's after I learned data structure and algorithms properly, that I really started appreciating sort of the magic of programming. And it made me a better programmer in general. And in this video, I'm going to explain exactly how I did that, how I learned data structure and algorithms and how you can do it as well. And no, it does not require you to memorize and talk of lead code problems. But first, to understand all of this, we first need to understand what data structures and algorithms really is at the end of the day. So when we talk about data structures and algorithms, we have obviously two parts. We have data structures and we have algorithms. And these two parts together really form sort of the foundation of programming. Let me explain. So if we talk about data structures, what is a data structure? First, like, try to answer it for yourself. Do you know what a data structure is? Well, in its simplicity, a data structure is simply a way of organizing data. So any function or any program that you have, you're going to have some sort of data that you're dealing with. It's sort of like when you're preparing a meal, like a meal of vegetables, for example, and rather than just directly putting the vegetables in the oven, you first cut the vegetables in the proper way to allow them to cook in the best way. And the way you cut this vegetable is sort of like using the correct data structure to get the best meal or the best and most efficient program that you can. And the oven, however, is sort of like the algorithm. It's the process that then does something to that data or these vegetables to produce the output that you want. In the case of programming, it's some sort of series of logical steps. So essentially, you can just think of like lines of code that you're doing in a particular order to turn this input data in some data structure into some output data, which will also be in some sort of data structure. But now that we understand what data structures are and what algorithms are, why are these so important? Well, if you look at this, what we just described is literally what programming is. Programming is simply about taking in data, doing something to that data and getting something out of that data or producing something from that data. That is all that programming consists of. Coding is the process of writing up these lines of code, but programming is knowing how to write these lines of code in an intelligent way that produces algorithms that are fast and efficient, aka algorithms that don't take up a million lines of code when they don't need to and that don't take up too many resources in the computer's memory because the computer is a finite thing. It has a finite amount of resources. So we want to make our algorithms as fast and efficient as possible. And this is why algorithm design is so crucial. And it's also why knowing which data structures we have available to us and which ones to use in which situations is also so crucial because certain data structures make certain operations faster and easier than others. So data structures and algorithms is really the foundation of programming. And that is why they're so important. And in a second, I will give you an exact roadmap with the exact topics around data structures and algorithms that you actually need as a programmer. But first, before we can get into that, we also need to understand what is the proper way to learn data structures and algorithms in a way that allows you to remember it and actually apply these topics to solving problems. Because the real goal for us programmers with data structure and algorithms is to be able to use this to become better programmers. And yes, of course, to know how to pass coding interviews. I know that's why most of you are probably here. Okay, so how can we study these topics properly? Now, this is something that took a long time for me to learn. So if you appreciate me just giving it to you right now in the next minute, then you can leave a like down below in the video. All right. So if I was starting over today with data structure and algorithms, the first thing I would do is forget about trying to learn data structure and algorithms. Let me explain. The biggest mistake you can make in the beginning with data structure and algorithms is to try to learn the maths or like the very theory heavy side of data structure and algorithms. This is not necessary. There's already people like very smart computer scientists that have proven the maths of like certain algorithms that they've proven that they work. They've proven that they're efficient, like in a very mathematically rigorous way. We don't need to do any of that stuff. It's good to understand the high level foundations and the methods, but going too deep into the theory will just waste your time. But at the same time, we can't go too far in the other direction of not learning them at all and just going and doing problems because then we have no foundation based on which to like have the frameworks to solve these data structure and algorithms kind of problems. 
So what I found worked the best, and this is the method that I recommend to everyone, is to do sort of the hybrid of both of these things. And the way you do that is to enter a loop, specifically the learn, practice, learn, practice loop. Meaning, the way you wanna do first is learn the foundations of some topic. Again, we'll get into what these topics are in a second. But then after you learn the foundation, you understand the high level, like logical side of how this concept works, then you want to go and try to do problems related to that topic, probably easy problems at first. You'll probably struggle at this point, but this will actually allow you to start seeing the kinds of ways where this topic, let's say heaps or graphs can be used, how they're implemented in code and these other things. Okay, then you try it for a while and then you go and study the theory a bit deeper. Now you're really starting to understand how it works and all these kind of things. And then you go and do more and more and more practice. And you just go in this loop of learning, practicing, and then when you get stuck in the practice you go and learn what you need to learn to solve these problems or whatever then you go and apply them into problems again and you go through that loop until you really internalize and you really understand how to solve problems relating to these topics if you're an aspiring junior developer and you just want to pass junior level interviews a good benchmark is when you're able to pass medium level lead code problems you know in lead code they've got like the difficulty levels you've got easy you've got medium you've got hard once you're able to reasonably comfortably pass a medium level interview problems using that topic let's say graphs that is a sign that okay now you know enough to move on to the next thing and of course even when you get in the next thing, you still want to go back and do problems related to all topics and things like this. But now you have the foundation, so you can just focus on practice. So that is how I would do it. So now that we understand that, what are the actual topics that you need to master as a beginner when it comes to data structures and algorithms? Now, of course, there's not like a single list that I can give you. Data structures and algorithms is a massively deep topic. Like you can go to the Wikipedia page and you'll see just how many different data structures and just how many different algorithms there are. So really what we need to ask ourselves is, is what is our goal? Now, for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna assume that your goal is to just learn enough to learn how to pass coding interviews, the level that you need as a junior programmer to solve the problems that you need to solve and to be able to function as a professional programmer. And so for me, I did a lot of research, a lot of study on like actually what are the topics that are tested in interviews and through my own process of interviewing, I learned what sort of problems I needed to be able to solve and what I didn't need. So that is what this list is made out of. It might not be perfect, but it's certainly what has worked for me. First, before you do anything, you wanna learn big O notation. What is big O notation? Well, big O notation is sort of the language of analyzing algorithms and data structures. So if you're wondering how to answer the question of when is an algorithm fast? When is an algorithm slow? Big O notation will give you a framework and a method of essentially talking about these kind of things. In addition, it allows us to talk about when is an algorithm or a data structure taking a lot or a little space in our memory. And this is massively important because going forward in every interview, every coding problem, you will have to use this because you will have it to be able to give it what's called a big O of any given algorithm. So it's super important that you first understand how big O notation works really, really well. When it comes to data structures, the topics that should cover like 95% of what you need are gonna be arrays, linked lists, queues and stacks, trees, graphs, and hash maps. And at the same time, you also wanna get a very good primer on how the computer's memory works. So the way the computer's memory works behind the scenes is that you've got like these sort of memory slots or like memory boxes that hold bits that are essentially the smallest unit of value inside of the computer's memory. And what every data structure does is it essentially allows us to access data inside of this computer's memory in different ways. So that even though in reality, the computer's memory always looks somewhat like this, it's just these memory boxes in these rows inside of the RAM. But when inside of the program, you design your code in a specific way, it makes it seem as if your data is actually stored something that looks like this, which looks like a graph. Now in reality, it doesn't look like this inside of the memory, but by learning how to implement a graph, you can then access this data as if it is stored as a graph like this. You'll also learn about something called pointers, which is what allows a lot of this data structure stuff to happen. Then when it comes to algorithms, what I would learn is array algorithms, recursion, which is less an algorithm, more of an algorithmic problem solving technique. I would learn sorting algorithms, graph searching algorithms. So this is breadth for search and depth for search, perhaps also like Dijkstra and some of the more complicated graph search algorithms. 
I would learn dynamic programming, which again is more of a problem solving technique rather than algorithm, but anyway, I'm just putting in this section anyway. And I would also learn about common problem solving patterns. So what are the patterns that you can usually use in many kinds of problems and how to recognize these and things like this. There's for example, the two pointer technique, you got the sliding window, you got a lot of stuff like this that's way beyond the scope of this particular video. But that is a list that you can just like jot down somewhere and start going through one by one. And then inside of lead code or whatever platform you're using to do coding problems, there's going to be problems relating to all of these topics. And then you can go through that process that I described before of doing the learn, practice, learn, practice loop. And that should allow you to absolutely master data structure and algorithms from completely zero. And all you need to do that is the basics of programming, essentially. So it's pretty awesome that as long as you can just follow the right process, it doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter if you're smart or not. If you just practice enough, you just learn these topics, you learn how to understand them properly, conceptually, then anyone, absolutely anyone can learn these topics and have the skills to pass pretty much any interview. Because if you just learn these topics properly, you learn how to solve these problems, then you have the keys, you have everything you need to pass any coding interviews. And that's the best thing about the tech field. For a large part, at least compared to a lot of other industries, it's a meritocracy. As long as you learn these skills, you can be a great programmer. Because as we discussed, data structures and algorithms is the foundation of programming. So if you get really good at this, if you get really good at this problem solving, you'll just feel like a freaking superhuman. You feel like you can do anything with code. And that is the most exciting part about learning data structures and algorithms. And that was the most amazing feeling that mastering these topics myself gave me. So I highly recommend if there's anything that you take seriously as a programmer, it is these particular topics. Now, with all of that said, you can take these methods and this list of topics and go learn it on your own online. There's going to be a bunch of free resources where you can do it. It's going to take a bit more time. It might be a bit more difficult to find the right resources, but you can do it. But if you have some money to invest, this is the time where I'm going to plug my own program that I've just created. It's called Algo University. Essentially, it's a program that is designed based on this exact system of learning in this program way and learning all of these topics that I just listed and I've taught them in a way that I wish I was taught myself. I struggled so much to find a good resource that didn't go too far into the theory, but still taught everything that I needed. So now that I know exactly what is needed, I just put all of it into one structured program that you can go through where we specifically study these in a way that you will understand them and you will then know how to apply them to actual problems to solve any coding problem or any coding interview. But you can use the code IMC for a special discount as a reward for watching this video all the way to the end. Again, if you don't want to buy it, you don't have to. But if you do, it also supports this channel, it supports me and allows me to keep producing these free YouTube videos on this channel. So if you want it, you can click on the link down below in the description. Without, if you want to start learning immediately and you want to learn the basics of data structures for completely free, I have this video right here where I go through it. And I have this video right here where I teach the basics of algorithms. So you can watch these two videos right now to get started immediately. And then if you like my teaching style and you are interested in my program, you can then check it out afterwards. With that, I will see you in one of these videos.